Hello, everybody. It is Dee and Renee, and uh, we are super excited to be with you today. We're going to be sharing our um, barbecue recipes and as we know in the U.S., now last weekend was a long weekend for Canada, uh, which was uh, the, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize, I said Queen's Day, um, but it was actually Victoria's Day. Um, so <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Um, so anyway, um, ba uh, Dee has been cooking up a storm and she actually gave me a few tasks myself. So I got to... Uh, do a little cooking myself. So um, I'm waiting for Dee to jump online. I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulty, but if you are out there, would you do me a favor and push the share button and share this uh, broadcast out to all of your friends and family and people that you know love to cook healthy or maybe need to cook healthy and have them join in on our weekly show. Um, if there are, uh, if you're interested in seeing our upcoming or getting our upcoming recipes, all you have to do is type in the word newsletter and you will get the weekly, uh, you're going to get a two part um, on your Facebook Messenger, you're going to get a two part uh, little message. So, one, you have to say yes to first to say that you want our texts or, or uh, I guess, Facebook messages. And secondly, then it hit the little button that says newsletter and you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Um, okay, so I'm not sure what's going on here but I'm here so um, let's uh, let's get started and um, I know that uh, Dee gave me a couple of tasks so I will talk about my tasks first how about that and then hopefully um, Dee is gonna pop up here so um, one of the things that she gave me to do um, was to uh, make three recipes. Um, and I did this literally in less than an hour and I took pictures at the same time. So um, it, it, it's doable, you guys. If you feel like you don't have time to cook, you don't have time to make fresh things and, and um, here she is, there's my girl. All right, here she comes. Hey, D, you made it. Are you here? Miss D, are you, can, can we hear you? D, are you there? Okay, you guys, I'm gonna pop the veggies back up here and see if we can uh, get get Miss D back here soon. All right, so um, one of the things that she gave me to do was simply to um, do to grill some vegetables. Um, and so I happen to be down here in our Palm Desert location, and uh, we, we have a ideal protein down here in Palm Desert in the Palm Springs area. So if you're down here, stop in and visit. Um, we love, love, love visitors. Um, but uh, we also are usually this time of year is amazing and it's 100 degrees outside. Well, right now it's probably about mm, less than 70 and it's raining. It's going to rain for about four hours today and then the sun is going to come out and it's going to be probably 85 tomorrow and for the rest of the weekend in the 90s. But um, okay, you guys, I see a couple people that have jumped on here. Hi, Sandy, how are you? Glad to have you with us. And um, uh, June says she loves flame broiled food. All right, if you guys love to barbecue, do me a favor and give me the like symbol, the heart symbol whatever that means to you. Um, just, uh, it, I know that in our family, being together and being at home and being outside, all of those things go together. They're fun, they're, um, you know, it's so nice when we can all be swimming and hanging out uh, in the backyard or um, just casually together in the um, evening time. And, um, 
So um, what I did with these vegetables, and, and you can tell, you guys, I'm not a cook. So if I can do it, you can do it. And um, so these are uh, green onions. Uh, so I'll tell you how she had me do them. So she had me do the green onions first. They took the fastest and uh, literally under maybe like three minutes. And, and so I turned them very quickly. Um, and then they were, um, then they were done. And so the asparagus was still on there when I was doing, uh, so as I had, whoa, she made it, she made it. <laughs> so I was just, I was just talking about these, uh, veggies here and let's see how we're gonna have to do this today let's see what we got here oh there we go um we're gonna be on the left today so um how are you Dee? i'm good thank you <laughs> how are you you are looking I'm, fabulous today oh, thank you i think we should probably push the show out another half an hour so we have time to test <laughs> You guys were just working with this this new time frame and Dee comes home from work and then she has to, you know, beat everybody with a stick to get off of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, sorry so, guys, I had a bad connection today. Yeah, yeah, it happened. So tell us, um, I was just talking about my weather here. It just decided randomly, it's usually like 100 degrees this weekend, like straight through. And it's been very nice and cool in the in the upper eight or lower 80s. And today it decided for four hours to just have a rainstorm. So um, that is when I thought, oh, I'll just cook right before the show. And then I'll have have all these fresh veggies, you know, like this. Beautiful. <laughs> but it was raining outside, but it was warm rain. It was great. So tell us what's happening in the hat. Well, today it's probably, it's 20, about 20 degrees. So it'd be about in the seventies, maybe oh. close to, yeah. Um, but we had a, so last night when I was trying to barbecue, funny enough, we had rain as well. So oh. mother nature was just not cooperating with this week's ideas. So <laughs> I was grilling shrimp at 11 PM last night. True story, people. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. So fun. Well, we have a few, few people on. Um, Joelle says, lucky guys, I'm in the Northeast and it's still cold. Well, I'm bummed Ooh. for you. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, Line is uh, from Quebec. Thanks for jumping on and saying hi. If you are just coming on to the show, tell us where you're from. Hit the share button. If you're loving any of these recipes, hit the like button. We love all that stuff. And of course, uh, put your comments, uh, any questions in the comments. We love to hear that. If you want the weekly newsletters, all you have to do is type in newsletter and you are going to get a message in your Facebook messenger box. Okay, D. So um, I'm going to pop these back to where they belong. And um, so you were grilling up a storm last night. Uh, tell me yeah. about, I mean, I love grilled chicken. I eat a lot of chicken. Um, but, and, and even, you know, one of the things that uh, you know that I've been doing is, is uh, starting the Maintain Don't Gain Summer Challenge, which starts on June 24th. And we have a special group if you wanna join it. Um, just put uh, maintain in the comments and I'll send you a little link to it. Um, but, uh, you know, the key thing, and I, and I think sometimes what people miss is when you're moving from weight loss to maintenance, we're still eating a lot of the same things, aren't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We're yeah. Not we're not heading back to burger and fries land. So um, tell us what, what healthy choices you have on the menu this week. So I we obviously we're featuring some grilling, um, but we're giving you some great marinades, barbecue sauces, um, pest, a pesto that can be used as a salad dressing, or you can brush it on grilled vegetables, meats. Um, you can use it as a dressing for your faux potato salads. Um, Beautiful right there. So very, very simple, versatile um, dressings, marinades, um, barbecue sauces that 
are made out of ingredients that should be, they will become a standard um, in your pantry once you get going on clean eating, low sugar, low carb eating. Um, so they are things that will be easily accessible. They'll become really common um, to you to make some great fresh um, again, dressings, marinades, so on and so forth. And it really shows you that you don't need um, a lot of pre-bottled, you don't need a lot of fake sweeteners, those types of things um, while you are in the losing phase. And then these dressings and marinades transfer right into maintenance. Of course, you can dress them up even a little bit more once you are in those phases, um, but really or sorry, in the maintenance phase, but really simple to do, um, fast and easy and super tasty. And um, fresh ingredients can keep for weeks in your fridge um, if kept airtight. So um, a little bit of fast work can go a long, long way um, as well. So, yeah. Yeah, and and honestly, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of my um, faux pas uh, in, in my uh, <laughs> journey today. <laughs> But um, think, for, I love fresh stuff. And, and honestly, you guys, I was the biggest like ranch dressing, uh, any kind of dressing, blue cheese dressing, creamy Italian dressing. I put dressing on everything. And now I love my uh, oh, I love my, you know, omega threes, which is going to be your um, olive oils. And, and there's lots of flavored olive oils. And, and this dressing actually D that you made today was delicious and um i uh did drizzle it over the the veggies i did everything just like you told me to <laughs> <laughs> and, and really simple right simple ingredients super. simple method yeah yeah super yeah. super simple um yeah. and and you know a lot of of what you can do is is you can grow your own herbs and mm -hmm. have them right in the backyard and so you know, if you have a rosemary, a rosemary bush, and and if you have some basil, um, you just walk outside and and grab some basil leaves and and make your pesto. I mean, really, mm -hmm. really good stuff. And um, th this time of the year, you can find herb gardens too, portable herb gardens that you can grow inside and out. Um, true. That you, yeah, they're they're really neat. They look really pretty too. So. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about this sauce that you used with the chicken, the dipping sauce, because I think, again, we're, you know, we've become so accustomed to sauces and I was a barbecue sauce for a week and, um, you know, it's just filled with sugar. Yeah. So the interesting part about um, this this creation of barbecue sauce today, um, I did use an ingredient that um, if you've watched some of our previous shows, you, you guys know I'm a little bit of a, a ketchup snob. I'm not a huge fan um, of ketchup because it is loaded with sugar, but I do love tomatoes. Um, and so if you didn't have sugar-free ketchup, you're going to use, you can use um, tomato sauce um, as your base or sugar-free ketchup. Um, in this recipe and really all your flavor is going to come from things like garlic, a little bit of pure tomato paste, um, crushed red peppers, um, chili powder, and I use some chipotle chili powder um, for some great kick, a um, little bit of allspice, a little bit of clove. So there's a lot of seasoning in this sauce. Um, uh, little to little or no oil actually at all. You use some water, um, and um, the the awesome part about it too is traditional barbecue sauces call for a lot of sugar. So you're going to see lots of brown sugar, molasses ingredients like this. In this one, I used um, Walden Farms blueberry syrup, and the blueberry just adds just a hint of flavor and. That is uh, pictured there is eight servings and two tablespoons um, per serving. So very little sweetener um, actually um, in this sauce. This will keep for weeks um, in a sealed container in your fridge as well. And so when you make a batch, it can go a long, long way. So it is good. You could use it on steak, on chicken, on pork, on shrimp, on fish. So you're not limited um, to where you could use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, and that's a great option because we all love our barbecue sauce <laughs> and dipping. We love to dip. Dipping, yeah. 
<laughs> so here's another sauce that goes with these guys here. These are grilled yeah. shrimp amazing. And I, and I love yeah. the skewers. I love every, anything on a skewer. It was funny yeah. because just before um, we went on on the broadcast, I had one of my brand new customers. She she said uh, she texted me and said, "I'm at Costco. There's some um, chicken skewers uh, already made up here. Should I? Can I use those?" I was like, uh, "No, make <laughs> your own chicken skewers and start learning to cook." Mm -hmm. So again, uh, this this is a marinade slash dressing so you make a batch of this and it is so simple so again it's parsley and lemon juice and garlic and a little bit of oregano and pepper and you can use um i use some like frank's red hot you can kind of see the label there um and i use fresh parsley and you make a batch and you actually can marinate your shrimp from two hours to overnight it'll work great for chicken again pork i just chose shrimp and uh, you could do you can marinate tofu in this as well if you're grilling tofu and then you just reserve a little bit of this marinade to brush on once you're done um grilling barbecuing baking and those shrimps literally took just a couple minutes per side um, to cook and so super fast and easy a quick brush of a little bit of the reserved marinade and you're good to go. So again, um, marinades can be made days in advance. And again, it'll keep all week in a sealed container, no problem. Because you're just using fresh herbs and lemon juices and a little bit of oil. The great thing too about marinades, so if you're in phase one and you find a marinade that calls for a lot of oil, you just simply substitute water. Um, you know, or you could substitute a Walden Farms or an IP dressing, you know, for a little bit more um, thickness or texture, but really your flavor is not, is it's coming from your garlic, your hot sauce, your lemon juice, um, your fresh herbs that you put in there. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna give you that in the recipes as well. So don't be deterred by, you know, if you see water as an ingredient, and then when you're phasing out into phase four, um, a lot of times too, I like to half and half. So, you know, if the marinade calls for half a cup of oil, I take it down to a quarter cup and use a, an additional quarter cup of water just to thin it out because it's not always necessary to have those really heavy ingredients in there. The recipes still turn out amazing. So sometimes it's a little trial and error. And um, probably one of my biggest tips on anything grilled, whether it is vegetables or your protein source. Um, you don't need a heavy marinade or seasoning on your veggies or protein prior to grilling. In fact, you get excellent flavor if you brush it on um, when you are done cooking. Um, and then the natural heat that comes out of the veggies or your protein, then your seasoning and your olive oils as well. So just know that um, it's not wrong to dress your veggies and protein after as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, if you guys are our barbecue fans, send us some kind of cool barbecue emoji. Um, tell us what your favorite things are to barbecue and what your biggest challenges are as you are in, um, you know, weight loss phase where you're cutting the sugar and the sauces and trying new things and trying new dressings and um, what are your challenges and, and we're happy to help. We're happy to make recipes for you to um, mimic the favorite things that you love. So if you are interested in getting these recipes and you do not belong to our newsletter subscription yet, all you have to do is type in the word newsletter and you will get a two-part um, Facebook Messenger. So you just have to say yes and then click the um, newsletter button so that you subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you get them every Monday. So um, with the long weekend coming up, um, there's a few recipes on these pictures that are, that are online on our group or on our Facebook page. Um, I already posted my recipes. Um, okay, so Dee gave me this task and I was talking about it a little bit earlier. And she said, um, you know, grill these. And, and it was funny because I was like, okay, but like, um, uh, you know, and <laughs> Dee, Dee thought it was intuitive that I should just know what to do and how to do this. So Dee, 
take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so Renee had some like really excellent points. So we were talking about medium, medium heat, high heat, where are you supposed to be? Um, and a lot, and, so any type of veggie or, you know, proteins are a little bit more finicky. So I'm going to give you some more specific instructions in your ingredients. But when you're grilling veggies, you can grill on medium to high heat. So medium and or high, you can heat your heat your grill to high, turn it down to medium if you prefer. But I really like char marks on my veggies and my protein. I don't know why. I just I find it appealing. So I tend to grill my veggies on a little bit higher heat um, and then they just cook a little bit faster. But there's nothing wrong with turning down your heat to medium and going a little bit lower and slower. Or same, you know, if you're cooking a steak on high heat, your veggies are going to cook on the side really fast. So if you're cooking chicken, you're going to turn your heat just down just a little bit so that you don't absolutely char, you know, the outside of your chicken breast and not be um, cooked in the in the middle. So um, we also will give you a little chart that kind of gives you an estimate. So um, as Renee was saying, so those green onions and that asparagus and they're going to they're going to cook a little bit faster than, say, the portobello mushrooms and then your zucchini and then your peppers. So we can help you out a little bit there. Um, on cooking times for tenderness um, as well. So, yeah. Well, um, okay. So these turned out absolutely delicious. And um, as I was as I was showing earlier, I have my plate of veggies. Now these already have the um, drizzled um, uh, the drizzled dressing, the balsamic dressing. Um, I made this pesto here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I um, did. I had a little challenge going on there. <laughs> so um, Dee gave me these ingredients here, and I made the phase four version because, yeah. as a lot of you know, um, a lot of clinics are waiting for our back order of the um, the trail mix, the sweet and uh, is it sweet and salty? Spicy. Oh, sweet and spicy trail mix. So you can make a phase one version of this and um, I'll let Dee talk about that. But I tried making this in my Nutribullet. It came out fine, but it's kind of chunky. So it's not like that pesto sauce that you get at the store and you think, you know, it's all like super fine. I've personally never used a food processor. Yeah. I don't even know how. So... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little too lazy um, truth be known with the food processor because I hate washing all those parts it's just the truth like I love to cook and bake it but I somebody could come up and clean behind me that would that would be my dream um, so when you're making them like in a Nutribullet or a I have a Ninja and it's 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 similar to a Nutribullet but the blade is it's really really sharp and dangerous um, but you can always add a little, just a, like a, a smidge of water as you go, if it's having a hard time breaking down or emulsifying, or if you're in phase four, a smidge more oil, um, those types of things um, can help break it down. And just so you know, when you're making, you know, pestos and dressings and things like that, um, you can keep adding a little bit of liquid, whether it's water or balsamic vinegar or your oil um, to get a desired texture. So Maybe one day you're going to want it chunkier if you're making some awesome pasta, uh, some faux pastas like on zucchini noodles and things like that. And then maybe you want it finer um, just um, to brush on like today's recipe, like brushing on your veggies. But there's really not a right or wrong. It's, you know, things taste wonderful in different consistencies. So don't be scared to um, play a little bit. So for a phase one version, I do like the sweet and spicy trail mix. Um, those chickpeas and those pumpkin seeds um, make a wonderful um, substitution for pine nuts. But if you're also in phase four, don't be scared to do some substitution of your own. Walnuts make an excellent substitution um, for pine nuts. And if you didn't have either of those, you could even use some nutritional yeast in place of nuts in your um, pesto recipes. So of course, phase four, you can add some yummy um, Parmesan cheese, is wonderful in a pesto. Phase one, we just simply omit it, no biggie. Um, we're still getting the fresh herbs and the sweet and spicy trail mix. Um, does an excellent job of giving texture and flavor um, to a phase one pesto. So 
Um, but, but it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually, I did make this with walnuts, and it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, yeah. Walnuts are um, one of my favorite maintenance nuts um, for a for a lot of reason. I find them really uh, meaty. If that's a, like, I find them to be a really meaty nut. They have really great oil. They're fantastic in salads and stir fries. And they're a healthy source of fat. Um, and they're a little bit uh, lower, their carbs are a little bit less um, per serving. Um, so we talk a lot in phase four about not being scared of, of healthy fats and a walnut would be classified um, as a healthy fat. Yeah, yeah. and uh, like I was talking about a little bit earlier, if you are in maintenance or you are going into maintenance for the summer or you wonder what maintenance is like, join us and the um, maintain don't gain group. And you can just type in the word maintain and I'll be happy to send you a link to that group. Um, one of the things that, you know, I do incorporate in uh, phase four is uh, healthy omega threes. And um, so we want to, we want that for skin, hair health, for gut health. And, and so, you know, incorporating things like uh, raw walnuts, raw almonds, raw macadamia nuts. And, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm all about buying organic and non-pesticides um, and, uh, you know, bone broth and things like that, that help us to heal our gut dysfunction. Super important. It's my problem. So I'm just going to always be talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. So the next thing that Dee gave me as a task was making some delicious, um, just a balsamic vinaigrette. And mm -hmm. um, I did not have the ideal protein uh, dressing uh, at home. So what I did was I popped over to Sprouts and I got a bottle of the um, Walden Farms of the balsamic uh, vinegar or balsamic dressing, as you can see here. And uh, Dee, tell us uh, a little bit. This was super easy. And again, I am not a big chopper person. So uh, all of my dressing is chunky and that doesn't bother me. So I have chunks of parsley, chunks of basil. Um, and when I mean chunks, I mean, you know, like little chunks but but it's not like super fine like if you put dried herbs so let's talk about a little bit um d can you explain you know is there any difference between um using dried herbs or i, I mean i love fresh herbs but is there any nutritional difference ah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to you'd I'd have to do more homework or you know we'd almost need like an ask ask the experts um you know in fresh form you're always going to get a little bit uh, more vit vitamins and minerals um fresh um, but as far as flavor goes um you know if you are if you don't have access to fresh dried is fine um in summer salads and you know and if you're using it as a marinade um dry as dried herbs are really fine because it, it's just so easy um, to prepare them for if you're using it as a dressing, especially in the spring and summer seasons. Um, I just really love um, the appearance of, of fresh herbs as well and and the fresh taste. Obviously, you are going to taste a freshness um, difference. If you're using dried, I always like to let it even just sit a little bit longer to let the flavors melt. Um, you know, is a tip, but you know, especially where I live, um, very hard to find fresh herbs um, in the fall, in the winter seasons. Right now, we're good. Um, but another like tip on herbs. So when you um, don't wash your herbs prior to um, using them, um, store them in airtight containers, unwashed, um, maybe just down, uh, wrapped in a, in a damp um, piece of paper towel um, and then just wash them prior and pat dry prior to use if you need to wash them um just that so break down the moisture will break them down you can take the stems off of them though and if you have them in airtight containers they last for weeks in your fridge so making really fast simple dressing such as the one pictured and literally it is using a little bit of your favorite olive oil garlic salt Salt and pepper, the three different herbs, and you could use IP balsamic dressing, you could use walnut 
and farm balsamic dressing. If you were in phase four maintenance, you can use real balsamic vinegar. So just really, really simple and fast, really, really simple and fast. So um, and another thing, um, back to like brush on the vegetables, beautiful. You could use it as a fresh salad dressing. You could even use it as a marinade for any of your protein or tofu again. Yeah. Yeah. Super so here, the, this, this last picture shows where I've kind of uh, drizzled the chunky dressing over the different veggies. And, uh, you know, that would be a delicious plate to bring to an event, to bring with you to a barbecue, something that you are attending. Um, and uh, so let's just talk for just a minute, Dee, about um, preparing things ourselves and, and, you know, understanding uh, how quick actually, you know, I was telling Dee, this took me less than an hour and I was taking pictures the whole time. So, <laughs> um, you know, you guys can do this in, in 30 minutes. You can quickly wash your veggies, cut them, throw them on the grill. While they're on the grill, you're zipping up your pesto in, in the blender and, and making your quick dressing, or you already have some that you made a bigger batch of. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, Dee. Yeah. Um, so really what we can help you with is a um, pantry ingredient list. Um, some must-haves, especially if you are in the losing phase, because um, they carry right through to maintenance. So you're not going to change these ingredients. They're going to be in your in your pantry. You know, we're always going to recommend a really good olive oil or grapeseed oil. Uh, we like things like um, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, Bragg's soy aminos. Um, always love fresh vegetables. Always love fresh, or sorry, uh, garlic, um, fresh herbs, salt and pepper, sugar-free hot sauce. Um, mustard, you know, so dried mustard, um, your herb and spices become um, your secret weapon um, in creating fantastic fast um, dressings and uh, marinades, um, those types of things. Really fast to throw together. And what's really nice about it is you can make a single serving so fast um, or you can make a big container of it that lasts a couple of weeks so that when you're in a hurry uh, you have options and the protein choices that we showed you today too if you have little chicken tenderloins thawed in your fridge it's literally going to take five minutes to grill those six you know three minutes per side done same with the shrimp couple minutes per, per side done so really fast and simple but super tasty um, so you don't have to spend hours and hours doing laborious meal prep um, you know to enjoy really really healthy food and of course if the weather permits this time of the year as well I encourage everybody to get out there get some uh, some vitamin D enjoy your decks your backyards your patios if you have them really sit down and enjoy your food um, versus you know don't sit down in front of the TV or the computer if you don't have to and just really um, enjoy the fresh flavors and your surrounding this time of the year so Renee where you are today is an absolutely perfect setting you know and the perfect vehicle to show us um, your fabulous food uh, you know your fabulous patio your flowers the freshness like that's an ideal you know if you have the time to sit down and enjoy that um, and then two I'm a huge fan of always making extra guys always making extra right so if you know for how fast these recipes are today really easily uh, done to double triple them you know if you're going to have a busy week mm -hmm. well that's what i was telling d is i have a a, a bevy a, gr a group coming in tomorrow i've got like eight people arriving so um that was another reason wanting to you know do the veggies at the last minute i'll throw them in containers and we'll heat them up on the grill tomorrow quickly as we uh, uh all, everybody's kind of getting here late so we'll be barbecuing tomorrow night for sure um and so d what are your top three tips for going to an event this long weekend oh um a huge fan of bring your own food. So even if your host or hostesses say, no, no, just come, um, always be prepared and you'll be pleasantly surprised if you bring um, a really healthy choice, uh, bring extra of it because people will eat it. 
And uh, that is an often, I, I hear that report back from clients all the time that will say, oh, we went to this gathering, I brought this and everybody was really interested in it. Or, you know, we went to this event and, you know, all I brought was this great big veggie tray and I was feeling like it wasn't going to suffice. And then we get there and there was no options like that. And everybody was eating the tray because, you know, those simple um, options were overlooked. Um, and that's a really, uh, you know, that's a key, that's a key thing. So I've heard a lot of clients always say, gosh, you know, we went to this big potluck, potluck or a buffet and, you know, the broccoli salad had creamy dressing and the potato salad had creamy dressing and be danged if they didn't dress the actual, you know, plain salad that was there. So everything, you know, was chock full of creamy dressings. I really just needed a good old fashioned veggie tray, you know, so don't, don't be scared of doing that same thing. You know, maybe you take some shrimp cocktail for yourself. And one thing that I'm a big fan of is that don't ever go anywhere hungry and make sure you have an extra snack um, or drink or ready-made or a packet in the shaker cup, whatever, whatever your jam is, you should always have a reserve in your vehicle, in your purse, in your shoulder bag, um just so that if you get you know in a pinch and you need a little snack before you can get somewhere uh just you know on the on the chance that there really isn't something there that's gonna satisfy you um if you are at like a, a barbecue and somebody you know they're say they're grilling burgers um you know what don't be scared to ask one for no sauce sauce free please can you do one on the side for me and and just enjoy it with some side condiments whether that's you know your onions your pickles your tomatoes those types of things um don't be scared of of that either and um one thing that um I, it's come up quite a bit this week and I was actually rereading, I'm rereading myself, um, the Beck diet solution. We, we refer to it back a lot, but there is a sentence in that book um, last week that I found so pivotal and it was, it's okay to be a little bit hungry. It's okay for you to experience being hungry and having to wait to be satisfied. And then that was, a, it's a good lesson to learn not to be instantly gratified. That's really hard for us because we love instant gratification in everything we do. Um, but barring that you are not a type one diabetic or other health issues, right? Um, it's okay if you had to wait an hour for a meal or even two, you know, you might have to drink a little bit more water or maybe, uh, you know, maybe you splurge and have that occasional, you know, diet drink or something to tide you over until you can get to um, what you need. So I find it, uh, I find that good practicing, like even for myself, right? Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, um, I did a five day, uh, it's called a fasting mimicking diet. And, it, and purely, purely, this is not for weight loss, is purely for to help reset my immune system. And um, one of the things I really learned about myself in those five days was that I need to rethink some of my eating habits and even being in, in maintenance and even maintaining my 65 pound loss for 15 years. There are some, I eat way more than I really probably need to. And I am not as hungry as I think I am. <laughs> So some some things to think about. We did have a question here um, from Sandy. She says, what about making pizza on the grill or smoker? How do you think your pizza crust recipes will do? So you can, you know, a barbecue is is an oven. It, it really is. So um, any newer model barbecues, they will have a temperature gauge on them. So it will it will give you the equivalent, whether you're at about 350 or, you know, 200 or 450. So that will be there for you. And so um, anything will work. Um, you might just have to use like a cookie sheet or a, like a or an actual pizza you pan. Pizza. You could get a pizza, um, what do they call those? Like a, I wanna say a rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you, you'll just have to adjust right. your, um, what you cook it on. There, there are, they now make silicone uh, baking mats for barbecues as well. Um, yeah, I know they do those um, foil ones as well. Um, we're trying to stay away from um, yeah. those types of things, but 
Yeah, so absolutely. And in fact, you guys, I was going to bake you a, a maple ginger cake in the barbecue, um, but I just, my weather wasn't cooperating with me last night. Um, but maybe next week I will uh, get that done because um, I have a little, I have a few treats up my sleeve um, for you that we'll um, share next week. But yeah, anything that you can bake in the oven, you can do, yes, a stone. There's a good. Thanks, um, Carla. Carla's from yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stone. That's awesome. Um, you know, on our, on our sharing pages, you know, we uh, had a client show us, um, I make an artisan bread and, you know, she made it in her air fryer. And it's another good point. Like you can bake in a crock pot, you can bake in an air fryer, you can bake in your oven, you can bake in the barbecue. Um, so you're not you're not limited at all. We you can bake in a little toaster oven. We do amazing baking in a little toaster oven. So yes, we do. Um, we do a whole cooking class with that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a amazing. Toaster oven. I was totally impressed with what you what you did. Okay, mm -hmm. we've we've come. We're you know as usual we're over our, our limits. Um, we want to uh, wish everybody an amazing holiday weekend. Um, you know, be true to yourself, hold yourself to high standards, know yeah. that uh, what you're doing now will get you to where the next 30, 40, mm -hmm. or however many years you have left, um, all those seasons will be healthy at the at a great body fat percentage where you're not you're out of the stroke and heart attack range and yep. and you're um you know in a good place and you feel good about yourself and and you know there's lots of time for cocktails and watermelon i think the biggest thing that came up as a a challenge in the uh maintain uh group is i love my watermelon so uh d you're going to be in charge of figuring that one out <laughs> I think I'm gonna do. I we might we might just have to do a whole um, mocktail popsicle slush. Oh, totally. You know, like mock yeah. slush show. Um, because yeah. that's it. You know, so again on this Memorial Day weekend for you guys, you know, like don't be scared to freeze your ready-made drinks or your powdered drinks that you make into a drink. Freeze them, blend them. You know, once they're frozen, re-blend them into some awesome slushy drinks. Make some, you know, fabulous iced coffees or some iced London fogs. I know some people are like what, but yeah, they're fantastic. Um, any of our drinks make wonderful popsicles slash freezies, but you can also blend them into slushy drinks with some club soda or some bubbly water, like those types of things. Your Perrier, your Montclair. Um, you know, you can really make a fancy filling mocktail. Um, so don't be scared of those things too. So if, yeah. you, if you guys are interested in a mocktail sh show, send us the Bloody Mary emoji. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, it's been wonderful as always. I know you don't get the long weekend this weekend, but we yeah. do. So, um, send me I had mine. Love. <laughs> and you guys all have a, a super, super uh, weekend. And for all our Canadian friends, you had your weekend last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Bye, you guys. Okay. Bye, everybody. Happy Memorial.